credentials that are given great respect in ordinary society, and the PhD is certainly given great respect uh, for learned personalities. So, uh, one of our devotees uh, named Mahabudi Prabhu, who lives in Florida, many years ago he established a bona fide university in the United States, registered legally. It is called the Florida Vedic College. Uh, and Srila Gurudev desired that his senior preachers and, and uh, sannyasis would all uh, go through the necessary channels with that Florida Vedic College by preparing doctorate thesis and so forth and receive a PhD uh, in the subject matter of Vaishnava philosophy. So Sri Padmada Maharaj is the first of all of us to actually complete that task and he, he wrote a most wonderful, wonderful book based upon his service to Srila Gurudev wow. and he provided in that book so much evidence and quotations from all Vedic literatures on the true conception of Sri Guru and the conception and, and Sri Guru Seva. So Guru Seva means the service to Sri Guru. So that book is also available at our book stall. You can receive it and it will be a wealth of information for you to understand what is the mood, how to serve Sri Guru, and what is the the transcendental position of Guru and his relationship with his disciples. All these different topics are covered there beautifully. So, one doctorate thesis is good, but two is better. So, Sripad Bharat Maharaj has worked very diligently, and uh, now, as we've been, he's been sharing with us uh, the last couple of mornings, that he has actually uh, been collecting all materials from Srila Gurudev personally and various other sources over the years. And he has compiled Srila Gurudev's personal biography. And that biography will be produced in book form by Kartik time and also given its final title. But the title at the present time is The, the Supreme Treasure Srila Gurudev. Haribo! So this doctorate thesis is, has, is now being awarded as the second PhD. Oh, it, it has over 1,000 pages in this book. Wow. So this is going to be really a treasure for all of us to understand who is the Divine Personality, our beloved Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, Srila Guru Dev. What kind of life he has led what kind of seva he has done. All of these things are enumerated in that beautiful biography. So, this book is the thesis for the second doctorate, PhD, of Sripad Madhav Maharaj. And we, have, we have now want to display for the devotees. It's already been approved by the Florida Vedic College. Haribo! has been conferred upon Naveen Krishna Brahmachari, that's his legal name, <laughs> on his passport, from before he took sannyas. Uh, the, doc, the degree of doctorate of philosophy in, in Vaishnava philosophy. Yeah, from the university. Well, it's named Florida Vedic College, but it's actually a university, a Vaishnava university. So, we want to uh, express our great appreciation. And we want to... So we also want to mention that the devotees in general are encouraged by Srila Gurudev to also go this route for their preaching and they can also acquire their credentials through the Florida Vedic College. So any of you who are thus inclined should uh, figure out what your doctorate thesis is going to be in the subject matter of bhakti and become PhDs and become great preachers of Krishna consciousness. Hari Bol.
I do like <laughs> Oh, my God. 
First of all, I pay my humble obeisances the lotus feet of my Paramaradha Guru Pad Padma, Ong Vishnu Pad, Asto Tarasato, Sishumad Bhakti Vedanta Silo Baman Gosai Maharaj, and Ong Vishnu Pad, Puribraja Gachar Javarja, Asto Tarasato, Sishumad Bhakti Vedanta Silo Narayan Gosai Maharaj. I pay my obeisances the lotus feet of my spiritual grandsire, Nittalila Prashtang Vishnu Pad, Silo Bhakti Pragan Kesav Gosai Maharaj. And in Italy, Prashna Vishnu Pad, Slavoktan Sami Maharaj. We may have senses of Vishnavos and Vishnavis who assembled here to listen to Harikatha from Gurudev Lotus Lips, headed by Tridhani Sannasis. So, the Gurudev ordered me about Govardhan pastimes described by Srila Vyasdev in Srimad Bhagavatam. I think most of you have traveled to India during Brajamandal Parikrama. How Srila Gurudev <coughs> and all devotees under guidance of him, the observing Annakut Mahotsav, I think all of you have seen that scene in Giriraj Govardhan. So, when Krishna was appeared in Bhoma Vrindavan, his pastime was going on continuously. And Nanda and Jasoda, especially Mother Jasoda, is so much love for Krishna. Once, Early morning, Mother Jasoda was preparing so many preparations. Krishna saw, oh, today Mother is very busy. What she is doing? Krishna came to Mother Jasoda and asked, Maya, why are you preparing so many preparations? Is my birthday today? No. Mother said, mm hmm, means no. Is birthday of Dalmaya? Mother said, no, mm hmm, no. Don't disturb me go and play. Krishna became really upset. My mother never behaved like this way with me. What is the mystery behind this? He went to Nanda Baba. He took his seat on lap of Nanda Baba. 
and holding his hand, his Nanda was snake by his hand, and touching his chin, and told Baba, "Is my birthday today?" <laughs> Or Bharti of Dao Bhaiya? No, no, no. Then why my mother is preparing so many preparation? I went to my mother, and mother told, go and play, go to your Baba. <laughs> what is the cause behind this? Nanda Baba replied, oh, today is Indra Puja. Baba, Indra Puja? Krishna being supreme personality Godhead, in plenance of Jogmaya potency, like he knows nothing. Baba, who is Indra? Where he lives, why you worship Indra, what will get benefit by this worship, asking so many questions. Nandava replied, Indra is king of all demigods. And if we worship him, he will be pleased. And Indra is predating deity of rain. And but due to his causeless mercy, we are getting rain. And our main property is cows. So cows grazing grass and drinking water. If there is no rain, then cow could not graze grass, then grass will die. And no rain, how they can drink? Then how we can get milk and so many milk products? So we must have to or see Indra. Then Krishna told Baba, why are there no worship of Indra there? There is no rain. There is no one survive there. I think this is not proper. Then Nandava told, what is the proper? Now Krishna is giving a scientific argument to Nanda Baba. Baba, I think better to worship Giriraj Govardhan. Giriraj Govardhan is so tall. Whenever rain clouds are passing through one place to another area, then due to the attraction of Govardhan Hill, it comes down as a form of rain. Due to Giriraj, costless marriage of Giriraj Govardhan, like Govinda Kunda, Kusum Sarovar, Manasi Ganga, Radha Kunda, Sam Kunda, and in Braj, so many Kundas full of water, and so many green, green grasses, soft grasses, cows grazing there and giving us milk. So, Dandavadam said, what will you do? Baba, better you can announce all of her Braj. So, all Brajivasis took their preparation, will go to Giriraj Govardhan, or see Giriraj Govardhan. The Nandava is king of Braj. He announced all of her Braj. In ancient India, they, how they broadcast, how they announce, they will go T Junction or her four roads meeting together. They cross road, they beating the drum. Hearing the drum, when people will come, they will announce, today is, was Indra Puja. But from today, exchange of Indra Puja will also be Raj Govardhan. So all Brajabasis, they must take their all paraphernalia and go to Giraj Govardhan under guidance of Nanda Baba. So all Brajabasis did so. In Garga Sangita, Gargacharya wrote, Krishna is Jivaraj and Nanda Baba is Maharaj, Nanda Maharaj. How they went to Giraj Govardhan? By walking? Gargacharya told, no. They went riding on elephant. Even Gargacharya told, I was with them riding on elephant to Giraj Govardhan. After this. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Now, rest of this is Samaranda will speak, and which you have heard us before about Supreme Treasure of Supreme Treasure of Guru Dev. Today is Annakut Mahotsav, and the book will come when Guru Dev will stay, all party will stay reading Prajapandal Parikrama in Govardhan, it will publish in book form. Apart that, I need blessings from Srila Guru Dev and all Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Om Ajnanam Timiram Dasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksuran Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Venama First I offer my unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet and my most worshipable Diksha Gurudev Nichalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Padastotra Sakshi Shima Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipable Shiksha Gurudev, Om Vishnu Pad Astodara Satsri Shima, 
Śrīla Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, to all of our Guru Varga, to all the Sanyasi Gan and all assembled devotees. Śrīla Guru Dev has uh, ordered me to continue the uh, history of Krishna and his family and the residents of Vrindavan worshipping Govardhan Hill. So Krishna, uh, in order to uh, establish the glory of Giriraj Govardhan, he convinced his father and the elderly cowards men, and they convinced all the residents to worship Govardhan. At that time, they made so many preparations fried preparations, samosas, pakoras, mounds of rice, chapatis, and so many sweet preparations. And all the residents offered these preparations at the lotus feet of Giri Raj Govardhan. They also circumambulated Giri Raj Govardhan. The gopis, young gopis, elderly gopis, sat on bullock carts, and Krishna and Balaram, the coward boys, they all joined in the procession with their hundreds and thousands and millions of cows, and they were all worshipping Giriraj Govardhan. Krishna himself, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is showing that Giriraj Govardhan is himself supreme, he worshipped Govardhan and performed arti to Govardhan. And Govardhan himself, Krishna himself, in the form of Govardhan, said that he wants more and more. Anayor, Anayor. And then the residents of Vrindavan, of course they prayed for what they wanted. Please let our son Krishna have good long life and good health to defeat all the demons. And they uh, told, we gave you all that we have. And so Govardhan said, Triptos me, Triptos me. I'm satisfied with your worship. So everybody was satisfied. Govardhan was satisfied. But Indra Dev was not satisfied. He was thinking, why are they listening? Why are they so foolish to listen to this little talkative boy? who's an ordinary boy, I'll show them that they should just worship me. Sometimes, if one is not pure and his false ego becomes hurt by uh, negligence, he becomes greatly angered and he wants to show his power. So Indra, although a devotee of the Lord, by the Lord's will, played this pastime of becoming furiously angry with the residents of Vrindavan. And he decided to destroy all of Vrindavan. So he called for his very, very powerful clouds, the Sambarta clouds, which are the clouds that are called for at the time of destruction of the entire world. And he ordered those clouds to completely devastate Vrindavan. So all the residents of Vrindavan became mortified because the rain came down as thick as pillars and as sharp as arrows. And gradually, no one could discern the difference between the highlands and the lowlands. Everything was filled up with rains. So they went to Krishna and prayed for some help. And so Krishna himself decided to lift Govardhan Hill. And he went to Govardhan Hill, and he lifted Govardhan with a little pinky of his left hand. This is very significant for several reasons. Externally, he's showing that defeating Indra is the business of my left pinky. And he lifted Govardhan Hill just as an elephant would lift a lotus flower. So now everybody is under Govardhan. But there are internal reasons why Krishna desired to perform this pastime and why he put that anger 
in the heart of Indra. Krishna wanted the association of Radharani and the gopis in a way that would not be uh, criticized by any of the other Bhujbasis. So here, everyone would have to come close to him because everyone has to be under the protector protection of the supreme umbrella or Govardhan. At that time, when Indra was pouring down the rain, Srila Gurudev explained that Krishna's chakra went around and around on top of Govardhan and all of the lightning bolts and thunderbolts that were sent by Indra were smashed to little tiny thousands and millions of pieces. Also, Vaishnavanam Jata Sambhu, Lord Shiva, Gopiswara, Mahadev, who is the Lord's great devotee, he became known as Chakaleshwara Mahadev, or Chakreshwara Mahadev, Shivji, who has serves Krishna in so many ways. And in Vrindavan, he serves by holding up his trident. And that trident, in addition to Krishna's own chakra, that trident held up also smashed all of Indra's thunderbolts, lightning bolts, into millions of pieces. And not allow the water to come down. So, many of the... Um, Brijbasis, according to their particular relationship with Krishna, thought about this incident in various ways. In Vrindavan, there's no sense of Aishwarya. There's more Aishwarya in Vrindavan, more opulence in Vrindavan, than there is in Vaikuntha, in Dwarka, in Mathura. But it's so covered by the sweetness of Naravatalila, or human-like relationships, that that opulence is not felt at all. So when Krishna was lifting Govardhan, the cowards boys, they never imagined that Krishna is God. Their so-called Aishwarya Bhav was that Krishna is going to be getting tired. I think we're going to have to help him with our sticks, with our coward sticks. So many of the cowards boys tried to help Krishna out because Krishna is only our friend and he needs help. What is the Aishwarya Bhav of Nanda Maharaj? My son is not lifting that mountain. I do worship to Lord Narayan. And so Lord Narayan has now appeared in the body of my son. And he is lifting Govardhan. And what is the so-called Aishwarya Bhav of the gopis seeing Govardhan on the tiny finger of Krishna? <laughs> Firstly, it is by the power of Srimati Radhika herself that Krishna was able to lift Govardhan. As we know, Srimati Radhika stands on the left side of Krishna. So it's very significant that it's Krishna's left hand and the most left finger of his left hand that's lifting Govardhan which means, of course, everybody performs activities by their power. But Krishna's power, his Shakti, his Swarup Shakti, his Pada Shakti, his Antaranga Shakti, is Srimati Radhika, who, whose power uh, divides into different functions of the spiritual world, of all the living entities, and the material world, Jeev Jagat, and then manifests as this Bahiranga Shakti, this material world. So it's by Radharani's power that Krishna is able to lift Govardhan. When Krishna disappeared from the gopis, the gopis performed, they became so absorbed in separation of Krishna that they were imitating his pastimes. So one of the gopis, by her veil, she said, look at me, I'm Krishna lifting Govardhan Hill. She was only lifting her veil, but Gurudev said, actually, if she wanted, she could have lift that, lifted that mountain because it's by the power of the gopis that Krishna was able to lift Govardhan Hill. And what were the gopis thinking? What was their so-called, quote-unquote, Aishwarya Bhav? They were saying, Oh Govardhan, if you fall down one inch on our beloved Nagara, Krishna, 
the topmost, not Supreme Personality of Godhead, but the topmost beloved. Then, by our glance, we will burn you to ashes. So stay where you are. And what is Mother Yasoda thinking? She's in so much anxiety for her son's welfare. And when she understood and heard from everybody later, your son, I mean Krishna, lifted Govardhan Hill. What did she think? Oh, now everybody's going to think how great my son is. He's going to be so popular. No question. When Gurudev was telling about this once in Holland, he said, the Prajbasi will say, all right, well then if he's God, then let him give us salvation because we're in so much separation, we need relief of this uh, separation. That was Nanda Maharaj's mood. So there, I swore you above is never I swore you above, but always in anxiety and thinking, yes, my son is now going to be so popular, just like parents do. So, Krishna, now that the gopis were close to him, Krishna and Radharani were able to glance, share stealthy glances at each other. And what happened to Krishna as he was lifting over Dunhill hill and totally controlled by the glance of Srimati Radhika? As we hear from Prabodhananda Saraswati, just by the momentary sidelong glance of Radharani, Krishna's Pitambara, his shawl, falls down from his shoulders, his flute falls from his hands, and he begins to faint. So this also happened, Srila Gurudev explained, at the time of Krishna's lifting over down hill. So Madhu Mangal had to hold on to him by his waist and say, Krishna, because now the, the hill was trembling. So Madhu Mangal said, Krishna, this is no time to faint. You have to hold up this hill. <laughs> so the Prajbhasis are so fortunate that although Krishna is exhibiting the most Aishwarya filled pastimes, at the same time they have the supreme uh, fortune of having Krishna as their friend, as their son, as a beloved. In the meantime, Lord Indra saw that nothing was happening. Everything was still fine with the residents of Vrindavan. So he was getting, by Krishna's causeless mercy, the realization in his heart that I think I'm doing something wrong. So he went to Surabhi, the uh, cow, Surabhi, and begged her mercy that she would take him to apologize to Krishna. So they went to Govindakund, they went to Govindakund where Indra himself worshipped Krishna and Indra's elephant, Airavata, he bathed Krishna as an Abhishek ceremony with the water coming from his um, trunk. And at the same time, uh, the syrupy cow bathed Krishna by the milk coming from her udders. And in this way, Krishna became Govinda. <laughs> He is the, he became the Indra. Except the name of I'm sorry? Govinda. Say that again. That cow kept the name Govinda. She named him oh. Govinda. And in that way Krishna is worshipped as Govinda, the supreme uh, controller or master of all the cows, of the land and the senses. And mostly his name is Govinda because he gives pleasure to uh, Srimati Radhika. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guruve Gauri Chandra Radhika Tadale. Krishna, Krishna Bhakta, Tata Bhakta, Namo Nama. What's left? <laughs> <laughs> so, Shaman actually finished everything. <laughs> Maybe some drops are here and there. So first of all, I give pranams to Srila Gurudev, Vaishnavas, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> so, Indra, he was very much afraid because he had abused Krishna so much 
Who is that Krishna? He is stubdom. He is very proud. He is balish. He is very childish. He is pandit maninam. He thinks himself the big big pandit. He is bachal. He speaks so much. So Saraswati Devi, the goddess of learning, how she can tolerate the Supreme Lord being abused. Therefore she gave some other meaning for these words. Who is Krishna? Pandit Maninam. <coughs> Means who is, not that Krishna thinks he is a big pundit, a big learned person, but that person who accepts Krishna really he is a big learned person. No? So Krishna is Pandit Maninam. He is stubborn because there is no one else to bow down to except for him. Isn't it? All moving and non moving entities are nothing else but his creation. Therefore Krishna is also called Stabdam. Bachalam means even though the Vedic scriptures talk about him continuously, continuously, they cannot finish his glories. Therefore Krishna is also called Bachalam. His Balish means Krishna is very, very simple. One of the 64 qualities of Krishna, he never demands his respect. No? So all these abuses that Indra are giving, these are actual glorifications. Uh, he is the, uh, so when Indra saw the incredible opulence of Sri Krishna, even though Krishna manifested incredible opulence, he lifted Govardhan, that time Govardhan was seven miles high. That's two and a half times the size of Everest. No? Twelve, seven miles high, twelve miles long. But Sri Krishna performed such a, it's such a huge display of opulence, but in the form of a seven-year-old boy. No? So after seven days and seven nights, Indra's pride was completely crushed. But he was very, very afraid. Maybe if I come to Krishna, maybe he'll sudarshan chakra my head off. No? Could be, because Indra did big, big aparad. Isn't it? He tried to kill all Brijabasi. He tried to kill all the cows. So this is no small thing. Deva, uh, he wanted to destroy all Brindavan. So this is huge aparad. No? Deva, he was very afraid. So one secret is there. Sometimes if we make some big offense to Gurudev, what do we do? Or we catch the feet of Vaishnava. Oh, please, you come with me and say some good word to Gurudev in my ear. No? So this is one secret of spiritual life. No? One time Ramchandra, there was, he had made a vow. One man had offended Bhagawan Ramchandra. So Ramchandra had vowed, tomorrow morning I will definitely kill you. So Gurudev is saying that Bhagawan is Satya Sankalpa. What he says must be true. So Bhagavan wants to finish you, then who's going to save you? So he was crying, crying, then Narad Muni came. Then Narad Muni said, why are you crying? Well, the Lord, Supreme Lord has vowed to destroy me. Then Narad Muni said, there's one secret. Catch hold of the feet of Hanuman and don't let go until Hanuman promises to protect you. So the man went and caught the feet of Hanuman. Hanuman, save me, save me, save me, save me. And Hanuman said, okay, I promise to save you. Who wants to kill you? Lord Ram. <laughs> Hanuman was, oh Baba, who told you this? Narad, oh Narad. So in the morning, Ram Chandra took his arrow and went to kill that fellow. Then Hanuman was in the middle like this. Then Ram said, move, move aside. And Hanuman said, Ram said, move aside, I have vowed to kill him. Hanuman said, you move aside, I have vowed to protect him. No? And Hanuman went like that to fight. In Bhagawan's nature, he always gives up his own promise to protect the words of the devotee. You know? Just like Krishna, he promised, I will not fight in the battle of Kurukshetra. The grandfather Bhishma, he promised, if I do not make Krishna fight, then I, am com I will not go to the destination of the Chatris. My name is not Bhishma. I am not the son of Ganga. So Krishna gave up his own promise to protect the promise of Bhishma. You know? So Indra is too much perspiring, too much worried. What will I do? What will I do? Devi, he knows the cows are very dear to Krishna. Go Brahmana Hitayacha. Krishna always desires the welfare of the cows and the Brahmanas. So Indra went to one planet of the cows, Golok, and there he caught hold of the hoof, the lotus hoof, of Surabi. She's like the queen, the head principal cow of that planet. So she came there and he was hiding behind Surabi. And Sarabi, actually she offered prayers to Indra, but she abused. Oh, this Indra is a very cruel and nonsense fellow. He is meant to be Indra, means the protector of everyone. But he is not our protector because he tried to kill all the cows and residents of Brindavan. Therefore, only one Indra is there. Who is that? That is Krishna. He is the Indra of the cows. Therefore, Krishna got the name Govinda. And that place where Surabi prayed to Krishna on behalf of Indra, that is called 
Surabi Kund and all. Every year, Guru Maharaj, we go there with Gurudev, we take sweet rice in Malpur, and Gurudev speaks some kata, and Gurudev says, who takes bath in that place or remembers that place becomes free from all type of apparat. So this is one secret. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Rama so, should be ready. In the meantime, one kirtan. Oh, you. Kirtan. Oh. Dear King Krita Parutra, I have submitted your petition to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I told him that you requested that you get his direct association and service. I truly did my best on your behalf. However, because you occupy the position of king, which is that of a materialist, I am afraid Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will not see you. He was quite firm on this point. I am terribly sorry. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu promises to deliver the entire world and grant love for all of the jivas. I heard he delivered Jagai and Madai, two drunks. Has he decided to deliver everyone but a king named Prataburudra? If he is determined not to see me, I am determined to give up my life. I will give up my kingdom, I will give up my wealth, my honor, I will give up everything. Okay, do not do anything rash, do not do anything hasty. Because of your firm determination and your bhakti for Lord Jagannath, I am sure that the time will come when you can serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu directly. Now I have a plan. Please listen carefully.
your chance. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is resting in the garden. Do as I told you. Remove your crown and dress simply. Now you can go to him.
so much to me. You came and put this nectar, this Krishna kata into my ears. You made me drink this kata. Who are you? I am a servant of your servants. Please accept me as such. if you can just listen. Um, tomorrow you know that there are initiations in the morning time. We've already announced what the devotees who are going to be initiated will have to do. If you, if you haven't already given your names uh, to Sripad Vishnu Maharaj, then you should give that before the end of the evening today. And you should be there. Vishnu Maharaj is just here, standing here. And... Uh, you can register your name with him, and you can also you must also be able to provide uh, a recommendation by any one of the senior devotees who know you personally. And you should go there at 8:30 tomorrow morning to Srila Gurudev's house. You should be ready with a clean cloth, tilak, and uh, there you will uh, present your offerings. You should bring fruits flowers, the fruit should be uncut, and flowers for offering to Srila Gurudev, as well as any do donation of money for Srila Gurudev. So, um, and then the, uh, there's one more announcement that I was asked to make, 
due to the fact that Srila Gurudev uh, today had a very long day, as you've already heard, and uh, tomorrow he has so many duties to attend to for initiations, there, there are not going to be the opportunity to actually have private darshans with Srila Gurudev there at his house. So any devotees who want to present any offerings to Srila Gurudev, there will be wonderful opportunity uh, and to, to see him personally, you can come up to see him when he is sitting on his Vyasasan here uh, tomorrow. And also, when he is going to his house and coming from his house to this place, during that time devotees can approach him and offer him any uh, donations that you want to give or any gifts that you would like to give to Srila Gurudev. So everybody please uh, be conscientious of the fact that Srila Gurudev is trying to preserve his energy so that he can give us Hari Kata in the evening time. So, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Also, we just so many, so many uh, devotees are here now. It's so wonderful. I just would like to remind everyone that to be extremely careful driving on these narrow roads in New Braj, we also want to keep a very good relationship with our neighbors since we're here year-round with them. So uh, the road has, they have a saying here that you should give half of the road to the other person, but not one quarter on each side. So, <laughs> and don't drive so fast, it's, there's no big hurry. Uh, because they're narrow and there's no line, sometimes there's a tendency to kind of go in the middle. So with the sharp curves, you can just slow down and keep to your side. And even some people, especially if they're from Canada, they like to honk when they're going around a corner. So, if you hear some honks, it means another Canadian is coming around the corner. Uh, hey? He already made that announcement. Okay, also we want to thank everyone for contributing by registering for the festival. We thank you very much. So many devotees have registered. If there's anyone left, please please join in. We have some... Eight o'clock. You should come prepared as Maharaj described at eight o'clock to Srila Gurudev's house and, and be ready with your offering of fruit, flowers, and be dressed uh, properly and for Diksha being shaved. So anyway, your contributions help to sponsor this festival. And it's not just for the boga, for the prashad. It's only one part. There are so, so many uh, things that your donations and registration are used for, uh, like electricity, propane, tenting, toilets, van rental, gas. Uh, the list is endless, and we're actually going to print a list so you can see it in our Seva booth, how many different things your contributions help in making this festival successful and being able to um, bring Srila Gurudev here. We very, very much appreciate your help. So also, for New Braj, we're here, we're trying to, um, we have a saying, a quote we've come up with, to serve and preserve this holy Tirtha for Srila Gurudev. And Mother Shikandi Didi, Nichananda Prabhu, and family have made a very beautiful t-shirt in many colors. And every one of you, if you like, you can get one and have a nice momentum, memento from this new Braj 2010 festival. You can see on one side it has the cow and new Braj to preserve and serve, to serve and preserve. And on the other side, show it as it. Have a nice peacock and new Braj 2010. Hey, Prabhuji, could you stand up, please, and show your nice t-shirt? Jai Ho! So they're in our booth over there, the new Braj here, the project, save a team, and also registration in our Roy Bazaar with all the other booths. So please come and see us and take one of these nice t-shirts home. So thank you very much now. Oh. Also, just remember, like they were singing from the play, the Gopi Geet, Shri Gurudev has a nice book out there, Gopi Geet book. 
and in our book stall, so many books that explain all these pastimes, and also Sripad Damodar Maharaj. After this class, you can meet him up here on this hill, and he's giving class in Darshan to explain anything here for newcomers or anyone, actually. Okay, and also one final announcement. I know you're all very excited now for Kirtan, and then after that, nice prasad. So there, the calendar has just arrived, the 2011 calendar, and Srila Gurudev loved it very much, and it's also in the bookstall for your pleasure. Thank you very much. Jai Siddhan, hey, Jai Srila Gurudev, Ki Jai, Anakut Maha Mahotsava Ki Jai, Shri Giridai.